Let's try something even simpler, representing numbers. We'll start with numbers that we can count with, 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. When we think about representing numbers, we're going to think about where we start and how we get to the next number. For the counting numbers, it's really easy to figure out where to start. We start at 0. And it's also easy to figure out how you get to an, the next number, you just add 1. So we'll write a data definition that fits with that idea. Here are data and structure definitions for what I'm calling a natural number. In computer science, natural numbers are ones that start with 0. A natural number can be either z for 0 or a natural number plus 1. That's how we get to 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 and so on. Let's write some examples. Here's how to represent 0, 1, and 2. We just call plus 1, or rather make plus 1, as many times as we need to to get the number we want. Now we're going to write a function that prints out a number as a string in unary representation. Unary representation is just a sequence of 1's as long as the number is big. So 0 is going to be represented as the empty string, 1 is going to be represented as a string with just one 1, 2 is going to have two 1's in the string, and so on and so forth. Here's our signature and purpose. We're taking in a natural number and producing the unary representation as a string. Let's write some examples using the predefined examples of natural numbers. Here we have three examples of unary. They produce the empty string, a string with one one, or a string with two ones, for the numbers 0, 1, and 2 respectively. Now let's write our function, starting by writing the template. Our function needs to have two cond clauses because there's two possibilities in the natural number data definition. Just as before, we use the structure predicates as our questions. And again, we need to use accessors in all the places where they're applicable. Here that's just in the second case. And finally, we see that we have a self-reference in the data definition, so there needs to be a self-reference in our template. Self-reference is in the bottom right corner of our data definition, shall we say, or it's in the inner part of plus one, which is in the second case. So we're going to put a call to unary in the same place in our template. Now, based on our examples, we'll see what we need to produce. In the z case, we know we need the empty string, so let's write that in. In the plus one case, we need to add a one to the string that unary produces. We know from the signature that unary is going to produce a string for however many ones plus one dash n of n produces. That's going to be one fewer ones than we need for the whole thing because our plus one is really adding one more to our value. So we need to add one more one in a string to the string produced by unary. We can do that with string append. One thing I want to emphasize here is the importance of trusting the things we've written down about unary. Unary has a signature that tells us it produces a string. We're going to trust that it's going to produce a string when we think about what's in our template. Similarly, unary has a purpose statement that says it produces the unary representation. Plus 1 dash n, n is a natural number that's one smaller than the natural number we started with. So we get the unary representation of a natural number that's one smaller than the one we want, represented as a string just by calling unary on plus 1 dash n of n. The great thing about building this into our template is we trust this and we don't have to think about what happens in order to get that information. We just need to figure out how to build on that information to produce the overall answer that we want. In this case, we do that using string append, adding one more one. And now, when we run our program, all of our tests will pass. However, there's something a little unsatisfying about our data definition. We already have perfectly good ways of writing 0, adding 1, and so on. 
Can we use those in our data definition instead of these structures that we just made up? Yes, we can. Let's see what that looks like, starting with the data definition. Here we've replaced make z with just the number zero. But what should we replace make plus one with? Well, how do we add one to a natural number? We use the add one function. So we'll use add one here in make plus one. Now we have a new data definition, and we no longer need the structure definitions that we had before. Let's rewrite our examples to follow this. For make z, we just have zero. For make plus one, we just have add one. Now we've rewritten our examples, and they fit with our new data definition. Note that our check expects for unary don't have to change at all because they use the defined examples. But how should the function unary change? There's two important things that we changed. One is how we check whether a number is z or plus one. Now it's something where we have to ask things about numbers. Fortunately, there's a function that tells us whether a number is zero. It's zero question mark. There's not a function that tells us whether something is a plus one but we can just use else since this is the only other case in our function. We could have, of course, also use greater than or something else like that, but else is simpler. The trickier question is what to replace plus one dash n with. Given a natural number, what function gives us the number that's one smaller than that? Or a different way of thinking about it is after you add one to a number, how do you get that number that you started with back? The answer is you subtract one. Fortunately, there's a sub one function that we can use here. So we've simply replaced our structure functions with functions that we already knew about that worked on numbers. And now when we run our program, we get the same answers that we got before, just working with actual numbers instead. Now that we understand this way of thinking about natural numbers, we can use functions with self-reference to process natural numbers in all sorts of situations, and we'll do this again later in this semester.